I'm Ted, and this is the Real Ted G podcast. And I have my producer Bing. Hello, sir. All right, hey, Bing. So a topic came up yesterday that I, I wanted to kind of kind of address. It has to do with real estate, and I've been trying to stay stay on real estate. We did a lot of personal podcasts mm. the, the past the past couple of days. Uh, topic of real estate is how important is branding? How how important is branding? In how you know you tell me your definition of brand and brand awareness. And keep it short. My definition of brand awareness, everyone knows who you are, and it's simple. Everyone. Okay. So I have a slightly different definition because in our business, it would be very expensive, and I don't know how cost-effective for everyone to know. See, I don't, I can't add, I don't, I, well, I refuse to pay a million dollars for a commercial, but, uh, but you know, so uh, so it's not, not easy for a real estate agent to just go ahead and say, well, I'll, I'll be on NBC with my commercial. So I think real estate agents have to actually stay on task and say, okay, it's important to the people that need to know who you are for your services the, there's a good portion of them that know who you are. So there's a few ways to build brand awareness or your own personal brand. See, I, I you know, I have, I have the luxury that I have a brand behind me. I have Cobalt Banker, and they they do spend a good amount of money to have brand awareness. It actually is the most recognized brand, real estate brand in, I'm going to say the country, maybe the I'd world. I agree. I agree. And it's a great brand. It served me very well. So, so that's one way. But now, for a real estate agent, that's just Cole, that's Cole Banker. For a real estate agent, who the hell knows who Ted is, or who the hell knows who Davide is? Davide. You know. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, humility is a virtue. Uh, but for me, it's my one fatal flaw. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so anyway, when it comes to real estate, I think it is important to, to, to brand yourself. So when someone, when the topic of selling a home comes into play, somehow, some way, they say, wait a minute, there's this person that's always in my mailbox or always maybe the door knocking. You know, some people think branding is just about advertising and it's not. It's about talking to people always always knowing your talk always knowing your numbers and al- always being yeah mr real estate and as as boring as that can make you that when they do think of something real estate i get a lot of referrals from past clients and even non clients people that i've never worked with but they say oh yeah you know uh, maybe they saw a fly maybe they saw a for sale sign maybe they saw a sold sign so brand awareness for a real estate agent i think is very important because there's so many real estate agents out there people can work there's probably a thousand and five agents that someone can pick without even talking to me the trick is to get them to talk to you then the rest is up to the agent you know you have to know how to speak so 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 anyway um the topic came up because i went to a, a function yesterday uh an old colleague of uh, mine one of my one of my old agents actually he put together this group with the patchwork chamber very local uh and patchwork chamber and somehow he's connected it with real estate agents and how can the Patrick Chamber help real estate agents? Well, I mean, I like the Patrick Chamber. We've been members since we landed here on, you know, Patrick Rock. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Patrick Rock didn't land on, oh wait, I didn't land on, no. (laughs) I didn't land on Patrick Rock, Patrick Rock landed on me. (laughs) Uh, So to misquote Denzel Washington, that's been an honor. With its $15 margaritas. Yes, yes, margaritas. (laughs) So, um, so anyway, I actually, I, I like to support local businesses and the chamber. I consider, I guess it's not a business, but they've actually always been very good with us. So I, I did this ad and apparently people have noticed it, but I, I also keep in mind, I've done an ad for the Patrick Chamber magazine, I think five years in a row. And by the third year, I think they finally gave me the placement I wanted. So I always wanted, I think I had the back cover once and the back cover is nice because it's not, it is a cover, but then I realized inside front page is better because you're opposite probably the the, the biggest business that Patrick has which is the Patrick Theater mm. so I'm um, opposite the Patrick Theater uh, this year I wanted to do something that had a little dramatic flair and we just didn't get to, to the right idea but my my uh, my media company at the time they did come up with a really cool idea that that I kind of liked and I let them run, run with and it had to do with King of Long Island real estate self-proclaimed mind you <laughs> and and by self-proclaimed i mean i have i will do my numbers and i will remember them but i think that if 
if I had to clock in number of listings taken in my career, it is over a thousand. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. It's over actually, a thousand. Well, yeah, because Holy one crap. one year in particular was ninety two actual listings taken, and that meant that's one year. So now multiply that by, obviously I didn't do 92 every year, but even if I only did 45, most of my years, I probably averaged 45 to 50 for 10 years in a row. And then, and then the rest is, you know, another 10 years. So even if my number, so I'm going to do the math, but yeah. So anyway, it is self-proclaimed, but self-proclaimed with some evidence behind it. And in terms of number of transactions I participated in, uh, I think that, that, that number is actually, uh, three figures and up. Wow. So, uh, so I've been around a long time. You know, mind you, I didn't do it in two years. I just I find done... your industry fascinating with how you do like, with how like the sales work and everything. So it's just when, when I hear these numbers, I'm like, oh wow, that's how much you need to, it to be successful. Like a, and it sounds great it, it, and, and it is great. I, I, it's given me the opportunity to know that I can maneuver at, mm, I should be able to maneuver through almost any transaction. Some easier than others. Hmm. If you remember the the what you filmed when I had to go up and down the different things with cameras. Yes. Um, but this this ad actually you know does hit a nerve. Uh, of the, uh, and, you know the, the the president of the chamber was like, oh Ted, nice to see you in person. And, I, and he said, you know, without your crown. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so even though I think that some people have, have are probably drawing mustaches and Lord knows what else of my picture. Uh, I think that it doesn't, it, I don't want to say, you know, when they say um, any publicity is good publicity, but it's not that it's bad. But even if someone has like, you know, the idea that, oh my God, who the hell is he to put a crown on his head? You know, who, who the hell is this he? He's the king of Long Island real estate. Yeah, who the hell is he to, to have? What's that picture? I'm leaning in a chair. You know, and I will say it wasn't my idea. The, the, the leaning picture. I'm, the ad was. The oh. leaning picture wasn't my idea. The leaning picture was the photographer's idea. And she, she, th th these two women uh, that I rave about all well, the time. Well, this is your branding. Your branding is fun. Yes. And like, it's like, I'm I'm the king of Long Island real estate. So do you, what, what do you think if I had a phrase? I had a really great phrase. I mean, I still have them all. Uh, my, my best branding phrase, I think, when I was a, a full-fledged real estate agent, uh, I think I, I, a good friend of mine helped me come up with this. In fact, maybe she came up with it herself. Mm. Her name is Janine, and I think she turned around and said, you know, how about, you know, I think I was overcomplicating it. I was like, what do I write on this ad? What do I write on this ad? And she said, you're overcomplicating it. You're selling houses, right? And then it, it suddenly evolved to Ted selling houses. Who's selling yours? It was a very interesting way to like maybe that. be cocky. And also, you know, then get, you know, assume credit. Uh, so for, uh, just recently, I, I, I worked on an ad uh, postcard uh, that uh, for one of my top producers. And let's see, she had a phrase and she, that she used all the time, which is Susan Owen, a household name since, um, I, I, I wish I knew the exact year that I'm going to misquote. Uh, and it's a, it's a great phrase. Her manager, uh, from uh, probably her first manager, um, he ha helped her come up with that. And so I, I just wanted to take it, not take that a step further, but keep the idea. And uh, we used it in there as well. Uh, and then I, I, I think I may have, uh, you know, been inspired by another real estate agent. And I think I, I came up with, you know, sell it like Susan. Sell it like Susan. Yeah, it's a, it sounds very original, but I do know that it has an inspiration based on a, on another very famous real estate agent. Uh, so, but sell it like Susan. It's just so cute. It's so nice. The the, the you know the the I guess it's called the alliteration or, um, and uh, and and then uh, and then I was like, you know what? I was like, so this is how this is my process of creating and then I, I said i'm gonna take it one step further and just be like you know let's let's go let's get balls to the wall and be bold because this is a woman that sells more houses in her neighborhood and her farm area than any other real estate agent consistently for a, the better part of two decades so i and i just just said it the way it is it was no one sells your neighborhood like susan owen 
I was like, I went back to my roots of simplicity. Ted's selling houses, who's selling yours? And it just has that phrase, in, in my opinion, just has like a little motion to it. Like, Ted's selling houses, who's selling yours? And that would be enough to get me to kind of consider someone. Because it's like, oh, that's smart. That's good Riz. Yeah. You know? That's like, another That's another new term we're going to have to teach you, by the way, Riz. Riz. We're going to do it. Okay. Charisma. That's going to be our next one. Riz. That's what's. That's, that's what, what Riz means. Says. Charisma. Oh, Riz. Oh, Riz. It's usually meant in a romantic. Do romant- you think I have Riz? Hundred percent. So you know, someone asked me when they're like, "What do you think? Why do you think you have you know you got all these uh, at the time all these listings or whatever?" And I said, "My charisma." And they laughed. <laughs> they laughed. They said, "Ha ha ha! I can't believe you said that." And I said, "What?" Maybe some people think I'm boring. No, you're not boring. Robotic. So, <laughs> so Riz, Riz. Maybe on your first episode. No, I'm just kidding. I was right. You, you, and you had the you had the nerve to try to. You, you, I think you 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 tiptoed around it. You know, you can't, you sound a little robotic. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, am I? So I'm not sounding robotic anymore. No, you've Gosh. opened up a lot more, and and you're 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 totally engaged with it. And I knew you'd get there. It just takes similar, time. Yeah, similar to the difference between my first photo shoot and and my most recent one, and every, everything's an evolution. Yeah, it is. I've seen it even when I was working in radio. I would board up a show. I'd be a producer on air, right? And the first show was horrible. Always horrible. Everyone was timid. Everyone was robotic. Everyone was like, uh. And then by show like one hundred, they were like, yeah, I don't really care about this. This guy's a jerk. I think that, you know, like actually giving, like projecting their personality and intertwining it with the the art of being a performer. So, yes, projecting your own personality. Yes. And that comes back to branding. It does. Absolutely. You can't brand a non, your non person. You can't brand something that you're not. Yeah. So, when I say Ted selling houses, who's selling yours? If someone said, ah, what do you, who do you think you are? And I would just turn around and say, I'm the person that sold 100 houses. You know, like, uh, I'm I'm an asshole. Yeah. I met with the media in a good company way. about, yeah, well, I, the first media company I hired, I said, my brand is asshole. Uh, and it's in a good way. I uh, I was inspired by my first broker, because he, as- he is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need a, need a, a you, I don't even have a, a, a whatever for that, but yes, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad I worked in the beginning for, for a, a hard ass. Because I think that it it made me understand. It just ma- ma- makes you understand that. And uh, twenty years later, I understand why some people have to be a hard ass. I, I, I understand. Yeah, I, th- I think I should. I I would be I would be interesting if I was much more hard ass. But it's taken me like five years to get the ass I have right now. <laughs> and even that is really a mediocre ass. But it's a lot, a lot He said more, I need to do more squats. Better. I know, squats, squats, and more squats. I, just, I wanted to have the best ass in real estate. <laughs> it, I wanted to be the ass in real estate. No, I'm kidding around. But, uh, I, uh, but no, it doesn't, I, doesn't hurt to have, you know. Well, anyway, it has to be part of you, though, back to branding. So, right. like, whenever, whenever I've assisted or maybe you know had an agent that had a little bit of a marketing twitch some agents don't want to market and that's great and some agents shouldn't market and that's pretty okay too hmm. some agents are made for radio not tv yeah so, I mean, <laughs> they got the face for radio for sure i've noticed a lot of agents you know uh, get onto large signs and billboards and i don't think they understood my message and not that it was me that did it i just i think i may may have may have um put my picture bigger than anything else in my advertising first at least on long island i can only vouch for what i've, I've experienced and what i really am an expert on which what expert well expertish in suffolk county and long island i noticed that yeah i some, some people even commented on it why is your picture so big and the house picture so small i said well I'm more important than the house i'm not no no but didn't that just draw your focus to the house Oh, because now you're looking for the house, and you're like, like "I want to see more of this house." And it actually, it it's it's the, the the weirdest thing that I'm gonna take credit for in hindsight, but I'm gonna take credit for in hindsight because a lot of things that happened to me just happened weird, oddly natural. Like I was told once, you have to have an even number of plants in an office or a house for good feng shui, and I came back into this office and when we were having we're you know we're, we were very very blessed to be successful and everything was moving along and everything was happy and great culture and i counted the plants i counted them all because we had all we have all we have a good amount of plants for an office 
I have a lot of plants in my house too. I counted the fucking plants and guess what? Even it was number. an even number. Then I did uh, the feng shui bagua. Not that I, I, mean, I am not an expert on feng shui, not by any means. And I, I probably didn't know how to pronounce that word when someone said it, this is the bagua. I went into my house and then I went into my, my office and I said, wait a minute. The money tree is literally in the left hand corner where it's supposed to be for prosperity and we're enjoying prosperity now which came first the chicken or the egg so so anyway so i, f I find that I'm, I'm 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 lucky enough i'm blessed enough that things seem to happen the way they're supposed to happen well even so, this yeah. office is like part of your branding yeah i mean like, you're a hippie capitalist that that bleeds through your your style yes a hippie cap it, it really is yes and you'll notice that you should know that my office has the cheapest furniture of the whole office. I have a, an office where, where, where when we, we did a, a major renovation, we actually painted the wood tones white, went totally in this light blue, light blue, light gray kind of motif. This also uh, helps. Yeah, With I energy. had them paint the wood. The, we have so much paneling in this office and it's a real natural, beautiful wood. And I just, I just wanted a change and I said, okay, let's just go white. And we did blue carpet, so obviously our brand colors, um, and a blue accent wall. So we did all that, and the rest of the office, no one no one gets to see it because we're, we're always stuck in my realm here. The rest of the office has beautiful um, office desks, really nice and sturdy office desks, mm. have a good amount of drawer space, and they're positioned, it, it's, it's actually a really normal looking office. And then, but if you actually notice, in here, almost everything in this, in this room is free. Everything was either from, uh, my boss's garage sale. Uh, I forgot these. Oh, I hate to break it to people, but these couches. I wish I said I. I mean, they're really nice, and they were in a in a listing that the owner said, "I'm just tossing everything." I said, "You know what? I could probably use these." And so, so anyway, I I actually have the eclectic version. Yes, that's the hippie. That's the hippie, yeah. and then you have the and especially with the 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 money tree, the plants, the spiritualism, and then the capitalist aspect where your branding is good asshole. Yes. Pleasant. Pleasant asshole. Yes. Pleasant asshole. It, it, Not to be confused with a waxed asshole. Hey, <laughs> yo! This man killing me right now. Everyone knows I'm Greek. I have a furry butt. <laughs> so, where, wait, wait, so, so where, can the, where can the folks find you? Oh, well, they can find me in, in my magazine ad. No, they can <laughs> find me on Spotify, YouTube, and... Uh, TikTok and Instagram. But before and we Facebook. go, I want to give a shout out to people that definitely brand and I, I love it. I do these dry tries. I think it's like three times a year, two times a year at my gym. And they, you know, you always get a gift. I use this stuff. I use this for like taking the mailings to the post office. Love, I, whoever, you know, I think I, I, I already, already congratulated them. Good friend of mine, Diamond Cut Tile and Diamond Cut Restoration. Uh, view, I've used them. I've, recommended them they gave me these hats they're going to come in handy uh when i when i used to have hair they really came in handy because you know keep keep the, the hair but it's all about branding you know even if i wear it mowing my lawn uh so yes thanks for, uh thanks for joining us and when it comes to branding i think the most important thing to keep in mind be yourself